In this video, we will study morphological and anatomical evidences of evolution. Earlier, we have studied the theories of evolution. In that, we uh, had idea about the evolution. What is evolution? Evolution is a process of formation of a new species from pre-existing species that refers to any heritable change in a population of an organism over a period of time. Now, what are the evidences? Evidences are any of the available body or the fact or information that support the theory of evolution. So, by studying, by having the evidences, we can have better idea of the mechanism of evolution. We can study evolution better by studying the evidences. Now, this evidences of evolutions are categorized under five different categories. The first is morphological and anatomical evidences, then paleontological evidences, then embryological evidences, then micro, sorry, physiological and biochemical evidences and biogeographical evidences. Now, we will study morphological and anatomical evidences in detail. In that, first of all, we will study the homologous organ. The first category under anatomical and morphological evidences are the homologous organs. Homologous organs are the organs which have same structure and origin. Homologous meaning similar. Now, what is similar? The structure and origin of the organs are similar, but they are performing different function. And how it is so? Because when they have originated, when the uh, organisms were originated at that time, they were subjected to the similar environment. But later on, when they have transferred to some another place, when their same organs, they are performing the different functions according to the requirement of the habitat. And this is how the organs which are having the same structure and origin but still they are performing the different functions. Under that we will be discussing couple of examples. The first is hands of man and foldings of horses and dogs. Now what is the uh, function of foldings of horses and dogs? They are using it for walking and we are not using, man are not using their hands for the walking. Our uh, function of hands are different. So, the tissues from which they are originating, the forelimbs and hands, that is similar because here the structure and origin is similar. So, structure and origin of hands and forelimbs of horses and dogs are similar, but they are doing different functions. The men, they are using their hands for some different functions and horses and dogs, they are using their forelimbs for the function of walking. Uh, another example we are discussing that is the hands of man and clippers of west. As we have discussed that we are using the human beings, we are using the uh, hands for different uh, purposes but the west, they are using their clippers for the uh, swimming. So basic layout of bones was already present in the common ancestors of whales humans, dogs and birds. But later on when the uh, environment is changed, when the habitat is being changed of all the organisms according to those different habitat, they have uh, changed their functions too. Now we will take couple of examples of the plants. In that the first is the thorns of bougainvillea and tendrils of creepers. As uh, we know that what are the homologous organs? They are performing different functions but their origin is similar. Here the bougainvillea and tendrils of creepers both of them are arises from the axillary bud but they are doing the different functions. In this image the spines of bougainvillea is seen. This is the plant of bougainvillea and this are the spines and here this are the different kinds of uh, tendrils. So, the tendrils they are doing the function of climbing and the thorns they are doing the function of the protection. So, 
this are also the example of the homologous organ next example is all vertebrate embryos including humans they have gill slits and a tail during their early development so all the vertebrates their heart sorry their embryos they have gill slits and tail during their early development now we will discuss some more example um, that the example of open shear phylloclid and the stem of other plant as we have started the homologous organs are the organs which are performing the different functions but their origin is similar so here the phylloclid of the open chia they are performing the different function but their origin is similar and the stem of the other plant they are doing the different function they are supporting all the aerial parts but here the phylloclid of the open chia they are also performing the function of leaves they are also doing the photosynthesis so this homologous organs they helps us in understanding divergent evolution what is the divergent evolution the divergent evolution is the accumulation of the differences between closely related organisms within species leading to the speciation in simpler word we can say that the divergent evolution is the evolution of the organs or of the species uh, earlier they were similar when they were in the same habitat habitat but due to certain uh, changes in the habitat when they are uh, transferred to the different habitats then according to the environment of that habitat they have to change the functions of the same organ now we will look at the second category under the anatomical and Uh, morphological evidence is that is the analogous organs now just opposite to the homologous organs what are the analogous organs the analogous organs they performs the same function but the different structure and origin their structure and origin is different but they are performing the same function now as we have studied that the homologous organs they were helping us in the Uh, understanding of divergent evolution while the analogous organs the helpful in understanding convergent evolution what is the convergent evolution it is the independent evolution of the similar features in the different periods under that we'll study couple of examples the first example i have taken that is the wings of birds and insect as they are doing the same function insects are also flying with the help of birds and birds are also flying with the help of wings but here the origin and structure is dissimilar the bones are the main component of the wings of birds while the insects uh, wings they are made up of the chitin now we'll look at the second example the second example is the eyes of cephalopods and eyes of men they are performing the same function of the watching but their origin the tissues from where they are originated is different the third example is the phylloclade of the open chia and leaves of other plants so here uh, i have taken the image of the phylloclade of the open chia as we have discussed earlier what is the function of phylloclade of the open chia they are doing the photosynthesis Uh, and the leaves of other plants they are also doing the photosynthesis but the tissues from which which they are arises the tissues are different for the open chia and tissues of the origin are different for the leaves of plants now we will study the third category of anatomical and physiological evidences and that is the vestigial organs now what are the vestigial organs vestigial organs are non functional and rudimentary in nature however they were very functional in the ancestors of the organisms this occurs due to the decreasing use of the organs which leads to become small or non functional in nature so in our ancestors they might be functional but due to the decreasing use nowadays in present era they are not present at all 
but a remains of that uh, organ is still present so this kind of organisms they are known as the vestigial organs so earlier in the ancestors they were functioning but nowadays according to the changed environment we do not require that particular organ to function and that is why that is disappearing but a remains of that organ is still present in our body so under that uh, we'll also discussing few examples the first is nictitating membrane in the humans as uh, all the human beings we have the two eyelids upper eyelid and the lower eyelid and the sphinx structured organ that is known as the nictitating membrane so earlier when uh, in aquatic animals and in aquatic birds they were uh, present nictitating membrane it was functional when the aquatic uh, organisms they are uh, swimming through the water bodies then this nictitating membrane protect them while swimming but in human being now we do not require this kind of nictitating membrane uh, functional so the remains of the nictitating nictitating membrane is still present so it is believed that in earlier days the human beings they might be having the three eyelids upper eyelid lower eyelid and this nictitating membrane the second example under that that is the appendix what is the appendix the remains of the cecum so what was the function of cecum basically cecum was doing the function of digestion of the cellulose but nowadays we are not uh, taking up cellulose so much and we are having certain enzymes which are digest uh, which are doing digestion of those cellulose so we do not want any different particular organ for the digestion of the cellulose so later on it becomes uh, disappeared and a part of cecum that remains in our body and that is known as the appendix likewise the wisdom teeth nowadays we are not chewing that much but earlier our ancestors they were chewing so much uh, maybe they were taking raw food or the non vegetarian food and due to that they required more molars nowadays we are not taking that much raw food material and we do not require that many numbers of molars so the numbers are decreasing and wisdom teeth has become vestigial organ the last category under the anatomical and physiological evidences is the atavism or the reversion now what is the atavism or the reversion that is the reappearance of the ancestral organs so on our ancestors they were having this organs but nowadays those organs have disappeared but in rarest of rare cases certain organs they have again appeared in the current era so the, that those kind of organs they are known as the atavism that process is known as the atavism of reversion because earlier days it was present in our ancestors then meanwhile the long period they have disappeared and after thousands of years those organs again, again they have become appeared so that kind of process of appearance of the organs of ancestors after thousand generations is known as the atavism so this can be called as the reversal also reverse of the vestigial organs where a structure or organ which has become extinct in the species has appeared in the future generation certain examples we'll discuss in that that is the tail in newborn in uh, rare cases that may be possible in uh, today's era also we are hearing that certain uh, new babies they are born with the tail and we have already known the example of the lion baby certain babies they are born with fur on whole body so this were the four categories of anatomical and morphological evidences in the next video we will study paleontological evidences thank you